when Charles Darwin sailed here on the HMS Beagle almost 150 years ago now, um, he was just an unpaid naturalist. They let him be on the boat so he could study plants and animals in various places that this naval vessel was traveling. Um, and he, when he, they landed on the Galapagos Islands, initially he was just like interested in the geology more so than the life. Uh, a lot of the life was small birds and uh, especially finches, mockingbirds, things like that. He actually got so tired during the voyage that he didn't really do a very good job of labeling anything or um, of tracking where the where on the different islands things came from. But as he sat on his discoveries and his drawings and his specimens over a long period of time, he realized a couple of things. The first is, and you can see these volcanoes behind me, um, that these islands are really new. Uh, the youngest is 500,000 years old, the oldest about 5 billion years old. And after that, they tend to sink underneath the ocean through a mixture of the tectonic plates shifting and stretching the islands out. And then, of course, the waves and the wind and the other weathering forces breaking down the islands and returning them to the sea as sediments. And because they're so new, all the birds and especially the land animals here and the ocean life, they couldn't have just, you know, been like here from the beginning. That was a volcano. Nothing could survive. So they must have been swept here somehow, either by air or by sea. All of the land life that's here must have, you know, floated here somehow on some sort of a raft or uh, potentially the, the eggs may have been carried by birds. Um, all of the birds must have flown here and all the plant life may have been seeds that were carried in the birds' poop or um, in the birds' beaks. Fish life were swept here by currents. These lava fields you see here are about 120 years old. As you can imagine, anything that lived on this landscape 120 years ago was pretty much dead. So then that begs the question, how does anything get back here? How does life show up here again? Huh? There's this piece of wood right here. Way too big for any of the Galapagos Islands. There's no island that has the soil or water to be able to support a log of this size. You can even see there's a bunch of little holes in it from insects that must have bored into it. So this piece of driftwood must have come from the mainland from quite far away. And what must have happened is maybe it carried with it a lizard or a couple insects or some seeds or other things that basically landed on this island. Well, most of those things probably died. There's not really much food here, as you can see. So some of those seeds, as you can see behind me, must have grown into those trees. The few lizards that landed on here that could figure out how to get fish from the water or get any insects that landed, those things survived too, but everything else died. Those are called pioneer species. The plants that you see back there and then any of the insects and lizards that made it, um, all of those were able to survive long enough to be able to basically colonize this island after this lava field destroyed everything. Because it was so new, there were probably just a couple of species that started out here. But what he found was this really wide diversity of life, and the finches were where he really focused in his energy. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of finches here, but they are really wide ranging. Some of them just eat little seeds, um, while others, like the vampire finch, will actually suck the blood out of blue-footed boobies. And there's everything in between. But they must have started with just one type of finch, and then over a period of time, different finches on different islands have developed different traits. The blood sunking finch, for example, is on this really, really dry island in the north, and there's very, very little water there. The only water is salty. And so, at first, the blood sucking finches, called the vampire finches, used to just eat horse flies, which were parasites on these blue footed boobies, and horse flies suck blood, so the blood sucking finches could eat the horse flies and then get the blood out of it. But then, these uh, finches would actually, like, peck really hard, really hard, really hard, and get some blood out of the birds themselves and became, um, from being really helpful parasite eaters, to being parasites themselves. 